Hey, do you want to know how to find your way around in the afterlife? Of course you do. Let me show you how spiritual navigation works. Did you know that east used to be up on maps? We're used to seeing maps with north at the top, and then east is on the right, west left, south at the bottom. But they weren't always made like that. According to this video by the map men, a majority of ancient cultures had east at the top. And do you know why? There's something that happens in the east. Yeah, that's where the sun rose. And the sun is super important, so that's up on a map. The second most common was actually having south at the top. Ancient Egypt had south at the top because that was where the source of the Nile River was. And the Nile River was super important, so they put it at the top. But then, for a bunch of reasons, it changed to north. First of all, China invented compasses that had uh, needles that used the magnetic field, so they were pointing north-south. And then in the 1400s, there was the Age of Exploration. European nations started to use those compasses to navigate across the oceans. They were using the North Star to navigate as well, so you had North and Europe was in the North. They started making maps with North at the top, spread that custom all over the globe. And so now we have maps with North at the top. The moral of the story is the direction that we choose to be up on a map historically has been a matter of, well, which is the most important direction? Which is the most significant direction? All the other directions are seen in relation to that most significant direction. So what is the most important direction in the spiritual world? You could say that in this episode, we're looking into what's up in the afterlife. Dad joke. So people will have these spiritual experiences, like the near-death experiences or something, where they go and visit this incredible dimension, this expansion of what life is and the possibilities, and people will see this beautiful light that knows everything about them, and all the mysteries will be unveiled for them, and they just feel this love and this connection. like that. And we, when we hear about that, we have questions for them, and we say, well, what, did you see your loved ones there? Like, is everything going to be okay? One thing we never ask them is, hey, when you were there, is, is there like a north and a south and an east and a west like there is here? <laughs> That's the advantage of you sticking with the Swedenborg content. Because yeah, he does answer those unasked questions. But if you think about it, after you get over the initial, wow, we live on, what kind of, what's the nature of the dimension we live on in? There are some things in it that you might recognize that will make you feel at home. For example, Heaven and Hell 141, there are four quarters in heaven just as there are in the world, east, south, west, and north. These are determined in each world, meaning the physical world and the spiritual world, by its sun. In heaven, by heaven's sun, which is the Lord, and on earth, by earth's sun. It's a system. Everybody was laughing at us a couple episodes ago when we were talking so much about the Lord as the sun. And why does it matter? Why are we going on and on about how the Lord is the sun? God is the sun and the spiritual world. Because that's what it, the concentric rings going out from that, that determines everything else. It's just like on earth, the directions are based on the sun. So for Swedenborg, when he was writing this, he was living in a place that's called Sweden and that's way up high to the north, you know, using the north as up map. So where would be the direction for him where there'd be the most sunlight and warmth? South. I mean, still in the northern hemisphere or whatever you want. South-facing windows. Does it have south-facing windows? That's how you soak up the most sun. Not so in heaven. In heaven, though, they call east where the Lord is seen as the sun. West is in the opposite direction south in heaven on the right and north on the left. So in heaven, all the directions are determined on the basis of the east. And what determines the east is God. The reason they give the name east to the direction in which the Lord is seen as the sun is that the whole source of life is from him as the sun. Everything comes from this most important direction. Just like in ancient Egypt, they were thinking, well, the Nile comes from there. We'll put that at the top of our maps. Everything's happening in the east. Further, to the extent that warmth and light 
or intelligence and wisdom from him are accepted among angels, they say that the Lord has risen among them. This is also why the Lord is called the East in the Word. Why in the Word is it talking so much about something will come from the East? And it's because its correspondence is it's significant to not just the conditions in the afterlife, but the, the state inside each one of us. Not just do they look toward the actual manifestation of God, but in them, in those people, when you understand things and you got good feelings in your heart, it's like, oh, the, the Lord has risen. You're facing east inside you. <clears throat> it makes sense. And it aligns with those, those ancient map makers who used to put east at the top. Nothing to complain about. That's cool. But things are about to get weird. It's a well-known fact about me that I always know exactly what I'm talking about. And I always grasp everything precisely about what Swedenborg says. And it never puzzles me or boggles my mind or anything like that. That said, we're going to see, we're going to ride right on the edge of that here because there's some stuff that he's about to describe that's like a little bit. Angels are into the East. God's in, God's in the East. Angels are into God. So that's going to be the direction you'd think they're looking in the most. How often, what percentage of your time do you think they spend facing the East? Oh, you know, a hundred percent. This is Heaven Hell 142. For angels, the East is always in front of them. The West behind them. South on the right. North on the left. Like it's a bit like right and left here, but the whole thing travels with you. However, since this is hard to understand in this world, because we turn our faces in all different directions, it needs to be explained. This is how Swedenborg describes it a bit. So on Earth, all of us, we point toward a common center. Uh, he uses the word centripetal. Our feet point down. Everybody's feet point down, but because you can go all the way around the earth, somebody who you know is in Australia, to me, our feet are pointing at each other because they're both pointing down toward a common center with gravity holding us down. So if you looked at people all around the world, it looks kind of weird. They're all pointing in different ways, but to each one of us individually, it seems totally normal. But it, it works. It works to have a human life in which we're all pointed with our feet toward a common gravitational physical center. In heaven, it's the same thing, but it's not the feet. It's a different body part pointing toward the center. So the common center is God, who is the spiritual son, and it's the front side or the face of every angel that's turned toward that common center. So it's, what, what? But it's, again, it's not that much weirder than the earthly diagram. And there is a spiritual physics kind of reason that angels' faces face the center. The deeper levels of angels are effectively turned forward. And since these deeper levels manifest themselves in the face, it is the face that determines the orientation. So the deeper levels being the stuff in their will and their intellect, what they, what they believe and what they act on and care about, that's facing God's love and truth. And so that turns their spirit in that direction. Swedenborg acknowledges another counterintuitive thing about his earlier statement. He said that East is always in front of angels, no matter which way they turn their faces and bodies. This is even harder to understand in our world, since for us, the direction that's in front of us depends on which way we're facing. Yeah, I, I, yeah, right now I'm facing East, but, you know, like you can do that. So here's, here's how he explains that. It's not that angels are always standing still. And it's like, hey, Susie, I wish I could look over there, but gotta keep looking at the Lord. How are you? And everybody strafes around like this. They live lives a lot like us, according to Swedenborg. They move around, they talk to each other, they can do dances, they can pirouette, whatever you need to do. But the, their act of turning is a different action than physical turning on earth. What an angel cares about the most, 
what is called their ruling love is what turns that angel in a particular direction. So the ruling love of angels are all the different ways of expressing the love and truth that come from God. If you're in the state of heaven, you're there because you love God, which love the truth and, and the love for the human race that God is and represents. So the angels can be all around different points, but each one, like they can have a very different individual personality or way of absorbing God, but they're united by the fact that they all face that love and that truth. So no matter where they go and who they talk to, which they can move around and go to different heavens and have, I don't know, tea time, but the inner levels, as I understand it, the inner levels of angels are still turned toward God. So their, their face is turned toward what they care about. Because in the spiritual world, your face is a direct expression of what you care about. This is how he puts it in Heaven and Hell 143. The love that is predominant is always in front of their faces. In heaven, then, this is the Lord as the Son, since he is the source of all their love. Fur further, since the Lord himself is in his love among the angels, it is the Lord who causes them to be looking at him wherever they turn. I don't know if it's sort of like a heads up display where you're going around and doing things, but yet you can, there's a part that moves with you. So God is always in front of you. But this is something that Swedenborg experienced. He actually describes what it's like to have God in front of you all the time. As for angels having the Lord constantly in front of them, this I've been granted to know through a great deal of experience. Sometimes when I've been in the company of angels, I have noticed the Lord's presence before my own face. Even though I didn't see him, I could tell he was there because of the light. Angels have often borne witness to the truth of this as well. So it's not even just, oh, there's, there's Jesus in the way. Excuse me, I'm trying to look and get my medicine out of the medicine cabinet. But it's something about the lighting that you know you're facing in the direction toward the Lord. This is Heaven and Hell 143. Since the Lord is constantly in front of angels, we say in our world that they have God before their eyes and faces, that people who believe in him and love him look to him and see him. Expressions like this come to us from the spiritual world, for this is the source of many of our expressions, though we are unaware that they come from here. The way that this turning works seems a little weird, but actually we talk about that kind of turning all the time. If you say, how could you, you know, I, I turn my back on the movement turn my back on the movement. And that means I don't care about it anymore. I don't participate in it anymore. That kind of turning, the turning of interest and affection for something, that's literal in heaven because our spirits actually are that affection and that mind manifest. So they, because angels are always in heaven, they sense God always in front of them. Even if they're having a conversation, somehow to this angel, when he, he's looking at her, he also has the Lord right in front. And at the same time, in the same conversation, when she's looking at him, she's got the Lord in front as well. That's what it is to be. I told you I don't exactly know how this works, but consider this. Compare this to having uh, something that you care about a lot. Maybe it's a project, that you, a mission that you deeply care about, or maybe it's a person that you care about a lot. That person or that project or something, it's in front of you. It stays at the forefront of your mind. It doesn't matter if you're looking down and doing the dishes or something. That, that's what's in front of you. It affects how you live your life or what your attention's on, no matter what you're doing. Angels, their, their project, their mission is, is God and is the love for the entire human race that is God. So no matter what they're doing, that's in front of them. That is at the forefront of their minds and it manifests literally in front of them no matter where they're turning or what they're doing. I can already tell some of you were looking at that last section and like, that wasn't that weird. You, you hyped it up like it was gonna be weird. It was a seven out of 10 weirdness. Okay, well, I'm gonna crank this dial to 11 because here we're gonna look at three wonders slash extraordinary facts about the directions in heaven. Number one, Heaven and Hell 144, this kind of turning toward the Lord is one of heaven's wonders. 
for many individuals can be together in one place, turning faces and bodies toward each other, and yet all of them will have the Lord in front of them. And each will have the south on the right, the north on the left, and the west behind. No time and space. For some reason, it's important to Swedenborg that we do talk about the directions, that the directions are real and there's something tangible, and yet each person has their own compass, their own spiritual compass. So I can say, yeah, we're, we're facing in the same direction, even if we're facing in different directions. I guess it comes back to, yeah, we're, we're on the same mission. We, we're all facing toward God. So even if we're in a circle, we're aligned. This is the next extraordinary fact. Another extraordinary fact is that even though angels are completely oriented toward the east, God is in front of them all the time, they still have an orientation to the other three directions. This orientation, though, involves their more inward sight, which is a function of their thinking. So I'm always facing toward the east, but I'm also, like, I'm in tune with this, the west and the south and the north and whatever else there is, southeast, south by southwest. I think what this would be like is that you can, you have your main thing in front of you, but you can certainly sl slip into the mindset or intentionally be, go to the mindset where you're focusing on other aspects of, aspects of life and rounding that out. Somehow angels are doing that in their inward thinking even while they stay facing east. Weird? Good. That's what you, that's what you came for. Here we go, another extraordinary fact. A further extraordinary fact is that in heaven, no one is allowed to just stand behind anyone else and look at the back of his or her head. Mm. This disturbs the inflow of what is good and true from the Lord. The good news is you're not gonna have to comb the back of your hair. I, again, Swedenborg stresses, people can be in groups, they can look at each other. I don't know how strict that is like you get you can't be behind me but i know when we're talking about how we treat each other you're never supposed to go behind someone's back when you do something regarding this person it's always like talking about being behind is like you're sneaking around you're trying to mess with somebody without them knowing in heaven everybody's very open about their intentions and wouldn't want to do anything covert so this has something to do with that, but I don't. I mean, it's a, it's like a custom or a ritual or something. Like, don't don't be behind. Just like with God, you keep God in front of you. You keep your neighbor in front of you because hey, we're all we're all honest. We're all face to face here. There you go. So you and I and everybody in the physical world right now at this point in history is living in a north is up world. Your spirit though is living in what should be an east is up world. Because we're in both worlds at the same time, you can be working on your spiritual orientation. Not everybody's got east in the top. Actually, you can have east behind you if you don't wanna to face toward love for the human race and the truth. You're absolutely fine with keep, get that stuff behind me. That's the state of mind that's called hell. But the more often that we bring to mind the divine and the things the divine stands for, which would be everything that's good, everything that's true, the more we can, we're, we're orienting ourselves back to the east. The angelic state is just simply the point at which that's always what you're into. Doesn't mean you don't have a ton of variety in your life, doesn't mean you're not looking around and doing things, but it's all for the East. It's all for God, the love and truth that, that God represents. So when you have nothing in your mind that's more of a big deal than the happiness of the entire human race and the truth of the divine design, you can have your spiritual compass set just like an angel does. And that's gonna help us as we navigate our North-centric world here, and try to make it more like the way that heaven is laid out as well.